says denominator. It's the next right, little this section. Right, yeah. So this one I'm trying to get to be seven by without the that, right? Yeah, so let's let's break this down. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but a really quick little uh, side note, easier problem, just to get the idea. And then we'll see. This one's a little different, but it carries that idea a little bit. Um, so if I had one over the square root of A, how would I rationalize the denominator? Yeah, so I call it, my alternate name for that is completing the root. The so square root, the square root needs how many things in it? Two. Two. So it only has one A right now, so you multiply by another square root of A, and that completes it, right? This is one half of A, one half of A, so now I'm going to have a full A. On the top, I just get whatever the hell I get. Cool. If it was 1 over the cube root of A, well, now how many A's is it missing? It needs 3, so it's missing 2. So I multiply by cube root of A squared. Why am I making it a cube root? So that I'll actually be able to put them together, right? They've got to be the same root. So it's kind of cool. I, I give it what it's missing. Why am I allowed to do that? Because I'm doing it top and bottom. I can do it how I want to then. I'm going to do this because this is smart. So on the top I get whatever, on the bottom I get cube root of A cubed, which is a full A. With me? Now this problem takes that just to one step further, because what's weird about the bottom? Does it not have enough? Because it has too much so you take the extra out. No. Even better. Why Here, why did I want to make this a third power in there? Because three goes into three. What else would have worked in there? Would a sixth power work? Because yeah. 3 goes into 6, get the idea? So 7 sucks because that's a 5. So if I only gave it how many more B's? 3 more, it would be 10. 5 would go in. So that's kind of extending the idea. If you already have too many, just take it up to the next thing that that goes into. Anything you can do to make the root go away. Yeah. Now could you just take the B out? Like you could. And then you could take a B out, you have B squared, give it three more yeah, Bs. If it makes you more comfortable that way or whatever. Sure. I'm just, I like comfort. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That'll still work fine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then just Either way works. The end. I just always kind of show you first the way I personally think okay. it makes more sense to me. Or you could simplify this and then, you know, five goes into seven once with two left over. And the reason I don't like doing that is I don't need to. You feel to do like that. you're doing extra work. Yeah, I would be. I really don't need to do that. So how many more twos does this need? How many does it need total? It needs, it needs 32. It needs five total. I've only got one so far. I need four more twos. I mean, do, do you guys see how? That's the little dialogue you have with yourself. I got this many now. I need this many, so I need this many more. I got seven Bs. It's actually more than five, but... I want to take it up to the next number five goes into, so I need three more Bs. So whatever I do to the bottom, I've got to do the same damn thing to the top. With it. So on the top, I just repeat this. So on the top, you just get, you just smash them together because they both have a fifth root. What is two to the fourth? 16 times 3. 54. 56. Hi. 48. Oh, wow. And then you get A4, B cubed. You guys see how that the top just sort of gets smushed, everything gets smushed together. 
right? Because the top is not really what's driving what I'm doing. So it just ends up getting what I don't have. The bottom, though, let's write it out. This becomes fifth root of 2 to the fifth, b to the tenth. tenth. So the top, and a damn thing I can do for it. But on the bottom, 5 goes into 5. Once, 5 goes into 10. Twice. So when you rationalize a denominator, your last step should have no radical left. Do you understand? That's why they call it rationalizing it, because they want to make it rational, not irrational. Yeah. Can you just leave the 2 by itself? No. Uh, how do you mean? Like, is, is, isn't it understood that 2 is to the first Oh, yeah, I just want to make that point, because I, I realized the other day that when I say 5 goes into 5 once, and then I write a 2, there might be somebody out there like, you just said 1. But, uh, of course, I mean, I have 1, 2. Right, 5 goes into 5 once, so I got 1, 2 out there. You don't need to write the one you're right. Like, even, like, since it's divided by 2 over b squared, right? And the same way of writing it would be 5, um, 5 root 48, a to the fourth, b to the third over, like, can't you reduce it now that it's like that? Reduce it how? Like, now you take 48 and you, like, 48 is divisible by 2. Yeah, but you can't divide 48 by 2 because that's in a fifth root and this is not. Okay. They have to have the same root for you to multiply or divide. Yeah, And I can't simplify this because it doesn't have 5 of anything. It's got 1, 3, and 4, 2. So that's what went into making 48, right? So it doesn't have 5 of anything. I can't simplify it. Yes, sir? Uh, that's a, another question for homework. Okay. So your way would have worked beautiful. You would have had a B, and then you would have picked up one more B from your rationalization, so you would have ended up with the two Bs. Yeah. yeah. Any questions on that? Is that? Okay. Yeah? Um, on 12.1, Which one? Uh, oh, 116. And 108, too. Those are two ones. Um... When they give you the table of values, try to do a rough sketch. Um, I mean, if, if my rough sketch looks like this, <coughs> does that look like a square root uh, form? What does a square root look like? Yeah, that looks like a square root. Yeah, it looks like a square root because a square root looks like a parabola that fell over and this fell off, right? So that has a square root form or some kind of radical form. You guys kind of with me? If I graph a plot and it looks like this, no, <laughs> that's just, that would be linear, right? Make sure your scale is consistent. Don't make it 2, 4, 10, 11. I always love when that happens. Be like, oh, it's a straight line. No, your scale is freaky, right? You guys, that's the question they want, and there's an example in there, I think, about the form of something to see what, and that's a huge part of mathematics is figuring out what kind of function would model this real-life thing, Right? So like uh, energy usage, uh, when it's really cold, it's really high, when it's really hot, it's really high, and when it's not so, either one, it's really low, so it's parabolic, right? So then you can use that function to estimate how much energy you need at any given time and hopefully avoid rolling blackouts, for example. Yeah, look at the graph and just see. If it looks like that, that's not a radical. If it looks like that, it's not a radical. It's not a, a, a root. If it looks like that, that is a root. So then your answer would be yes, a root looks like it would fit this. The function would be some ugly thing with a root in it, but it would be a root would fit this. Okay, how are we doing so far? Okay. Uh, and then 108? Yes. Oh, okay, so now I want to know the domain. There. High sec eraser. Uh, blah, 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 blah. But I should call it G of X with that. Yeah. So what part of this restricts my domain? Your uh, square two. Yeah, does that make sense what I just said? Uh, what part of this makes X something that would make the whole thing freak out? This part, the two is cool. 
This part makes my inputs freak out somewhat. Uh, how do I figure out whether that happens? It's a square root. So it has to be greater than. So the inside has to be. Yeah. Solve that, you get your domain. Now they say graph it on a graphing calculator, which is good. You have to know how to do that. So you try to graph this on a graphing calculator. Take a look at it. And they say estimate the range. Bless you. Can anybody tell me what's the smallest output this guy would have? Zero. Zero, right? The smallest output that a square root would have unless it's been moved around is zero. Yeah. So what is the smallest output this function would have? Two. Two. Yeah. So the range would go from two to infinity because this is going to keep growing and growing. So I don't even need a graphing calculator necessarily in this one to see. But if you did graph it, it should start at two. Uh, where would it go? It would be something like this. It would start at 2 and go from there. Right? And, the, and the domain says it has to start at 5 thirds. So this would be 5 thirds here. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So if you graph it, you can see the range would be the lowest output looks to be 2, and the highest output it keeps going for up forever. So it would be 2 to infinity. How are we doing there? So for the answer, it would say you just write x can't greater than or equal to five thirds. That's fine. Uh, even better would be, you know, five thirds to infinity. I like it. I thought you were saying to put two there. Because yeah. you said that two goes to Oh, this is the domain. Yes. That's right. Now, what's the range? Range that'd be two to infinity. Good. Range would be two to infinity. Cool. So two separate things. Domain, I can, I can do algebraically very easily. Range on this problem I can do pretty easily also, but it's less algebraic. It's actually more like, but well, what could this be? The lowest would be zero, so the lowest this could be is two. Bam. That's how I can kind of tease it out. Or you can graph it and see what's the lowest it gets to. Two ways. You can either do it the way the book asks you, which is to graph it. And the graph should look something like this. And you see what's the lowest output. You just kind of eyeball it, or you can uh, actually you can do the minimum. I don't know if minimum would work now. I don't think minimum would work. Poor little graphic template. But you can just kind of eyeball it and see that's two. So far, so good. Or you just logic, use logic to figure it out. What's the smallest this part could be is zero. Right? If the inside was zero, this would be zero. So what's the smallest g could be? Two. Two plus zero. Right? The only way that g could get less than 2 is if this comes out negative. And can that come out negative? No. So the lowest it could be is 2. They're not saying you have to be able to do that because they said graphic. Yeah. That's how you can do it without a graphic calculator. Yeah? So that 2, would it start on the y-axis? Yeah, because that's the range, right? That's the outputs of this. So it would be graphed on so, I mean, to graph this, you just plug this in, the y1. Right? To graph it, you just plug it in, uh, square root of. Right? That's what you put in your calculator to graph it. This picture should show up. And when I'm asking for the range, that's talking about the y's. So what's the lowest y? is 2. And then it goes up forever from there. So it's 2 up to infinity. Okay. Yeah? Can you do number 42 on 12? No. Yes. Um, so, this is where people get in trouble when they don't read the directions. I'm not saying this is what you did, but just a little public service announcement. If you look at it, there's really not a damn thing you can do to it. But the directions say, write it in exponential form. How do I write that in exponential form? X squared to the is x to the Yeah, so all that mess to the one seventh. One, one seventh. seventh. So that would be okay. Uh -huh. Sort of slightly better would be x to the three sevenths, y to the z to the. Yeah. Either one of those is fine. My math lab. Has this? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
it didn't say what kind of exponential form. What's that? It didn't say what kind of exponential form. Yeah, that's why I would take either one of these. I would take either one of these. Yeah. Uh, 12.4, number 40. Oh, yeah. This one looks yummy. Make it three. There. <laughs> Just too many threes in that problem for me. <laughs> All right. So they give you a major hint. All right. I hope to God at this point, you guys don't do R goes into R cubed twice. And, right. We all know not to do that, because if you go into the next level class and you do that, and they say, who was your teacher before, Jeff? What's wrong with Jeff? No, I told you. You can't break into an addition problem with division. You can't. Too bad. Good. So they, they actually tell you they shouldn't have. You should know this. But you just factor the top, and then hopefully you see this in it. So how do you factor R cubed plus S cubed? R plus R cubed. R squared minus R plus Good. So one of each, two of each product in the middle. Closest to a song that you'll ever see. Yes. Look at how you say you can factor it, but why can't you just move an R and an S out and not have a square root anymore? Or a cube root. Yeah. If you if you pull an R out, so it's sort of like saying Because there's three R's and there's three S's. I know. Can you pull an R out of this? Because it's adding. Yes. Right. Cool. If it was multiplying, I could do it. But they don't both have an R, so I can't pull an R out. So what does the question actually want you to do? Solve or simplify? Simplify, yeah. I just wasn't sure if it was like rationalize or... So what am I allowed to do? Yeah. I got a Q root of R plus S and a Q root of R plus S. Those two will... Cancel. Cancel for it. And again, let me make it really clear why. I'm not breaking into that cube root. The top is cube root of this times this. I can rewrite that as cube root of this times cube root of this. And then, what do you have the same? So I'm never breaking into a cube root. I'm never trying to break into something. I can actually separate them using that property we used yesterday. We've settled into a certain mood, <laughs> which I'm trying to deal with. Even that didn't get it's one person's mind. Okay, gotcha. You're all in. <laughs> Stop trying to be funny. Just, just, just teach me how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just do it, boy. All right, so that's that. <laughs> Matt, boy, come on. <laughs> Talk to me with a stick. Come on, Matt, boy. Show me. So any, any other homework questions? Anything else from homework? Okay, okay. Uh, so I want to finish up 12.5 and, and then, uh, uh, yeah, so there's a lot of stuff that we, I know we need to go over. That's one reason why I wanted to not try to squeeze 12.6 in today. What's that? It's okay if we do 12 6? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. You're going to be jumped. <laughs> they don't realize that the test is on Monday. So I'd rather be twice the test on Monday. It's possible on that next test. That's why you'd say everyone knows the idea. It's done in the last So, two things. The next test is tomorrow. Well, um, yeah, so the test after that is Monday. Oh, yeah. Wait, is no, 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 <laughs> no, no. You said that to yourself when you signed up for this class. Oh, what we, what we I definitely want you to realize that that is the truth. All right. Um,
So 12-5, let's get back into a couple of things we did last time. And then there's some uh, stuff past that. So we just barely got into 12-5 last time. Here's the main thing about 12-5. Um, Is that that's okay? You're saying two plus. Okay. So this would be simplify yeah. the instructions. Seven to two. Seven red, seven minus. So do you have any like terms? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes you do. Yes. First two. Right? Seven, seven, seven. So 7 rat 7, minus 6 rat 11, and then I always have somebody who's able to go another step and they get something weird like that. All right? That's no good. So that is, I can look at that as almost like a variable, because do you know what the square root of 7 is? What is it? Who said that? Who? It's three points or two point blah 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 blah. So you don't know is what you're saying. So this is like twice something I don't know, like two x plus five x minus six y, because that's another thing I don't know, right? And they're not related in any way I know. So it's like terms. That's all it is. Okay, with you. Now the trick is, before if I had stuff that was not like, if I had x squared plus y, I couldn't, and that, I couldn't do shit to it. But now that we've got Numbers, they're not really variables, they're numbers. I maybe could do something to make them like. So if I had um, square root of 28 minus square root of, you could do it, Jeff, 63. You factor them and then you. You break them up, you simplify them, you do what I call reduce them, right? So Good. 28 is 4 times 7. It's beautiful. You might say, well, it's also 2 times 14, but neither 2 or 14 is a good number. Except the good number here would be a square rootable number. Except you could factor 14 and make it 2 times 2. Three. Yeah. Which it's, that's, yeah, it's crazy. So 28 is 4 times 7. And 63 is? Yeah. 9 times 7. So far, so good? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can see now, so a lot of these problems are going to have hints in them. If one of the radicals has a 7 in it and the other ones don't, the first thing I'm going to try to do is divide it by 7. See if 7 goes in, because what's going to happen here at the end is those are going to be like terms. Right? So this, I'm going to show you all the little steps. So I can break this up like that. Right? That's a rule we talked about. You can put them together, you can break them back apart, because they have the same root. I can break these up. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. Why does it make sense my answer is negative? I like it. But even more than that, look at the beginning problem. Which, which number is bigger? Yeah, so it makes sense my answer is negative because I'm subtracting a bigger number from a smaller number. Yeah. Do you ever have to look at that? We know. I just want to point it out. How are we doing so far? So if you understand how to simplify, and of course you're going to have a couple problems that are just like that. Simplify this radical. Simplify this radical. This problem just says, okay, simplify both of them and see if anything's like. Right? So what about this here? Oh, what you got, Jeff? So one way to approach this is to do 40 divided by 2, and then see if the answer you get is cube rootable. 40 divided by 3, that doesn't work. 40 divided by 4 is 10, that doesn't work. Or take them both and divide them by cube rootable numbers, right? So 40 is 8 times 5. Why is 8 nice? Because I can do the cube root. So you want to break it into a part you can do, and break it into a part you can't do, and then do the part you can. Don't do the part you can't. So that'll be cube root of 8 
times cube root of 5. So what are you going to divide this by? 5. Do you see the hint? 27. Yeah. Uh, 3. This is going to end up with a 5 in it. So my first attempt is to divide this by 5, because then they would be like terms. If that doesn't work, I try to do something else. But it's almost always going to work, because they're going to want these to be like terms at the end. So what's the root of 8? Two. Good. Plus twice, what's the cube root of 27? Three. So you get 2 cube root of 5 plus 6, six cube root of 5 is 8 cube root of 5. So it is just like 2y plus 6y is 8y. It's exactly the same. All right. Yes, sir. Um, I'm not trying to be stingy about it, but can you, do you have to show all of that work for you to... No, you can go from here to there. Okay, good. That's fine. Uh, just be careful. Yes, that's what I'm if you skip this step and you break it up wrong yeah, and you just go to here, I'm not going to know what happened. Okay. So the more work you show me, the better it's for me. It works everywhere. <laughs> Don't know yet that I like to see work, and I'm not sure where you've been. Um, okay, so that's not too evil, right? Yes? <laughs> yeah, but how are we going to know when, when exactly, exactly to do this versus, versus something else? Versus something else. Versus. When I want you to rationalize the denominator, I'll say rationalize the denominator. Otherwise, there's no way you would know. You with me? I would never put a rationalization problem in the middle of a bunch of simplify these. Because that would be kind of evil. It's like, what the hell can I do with that? So I'm going to be more specific. So if I say simplify, um, and I've got something sitting there, terms adding each other, that means how do you simplify it? You add what you can. If there's nothing you can currently add, you try to do something to make it that you can. So, Chris, do you have a an example of something that you might get this I'm, confused? I'm well, I'm just trying to find an example, but it's still... A oh, so right. on the practice test, let's take a look. Let's see if I even put one on there. What do we do? We see all these things. Yeah, there you go. What do we do? Can anybody tell me on the practice test? It's a good point to see if anybody still needs it. Um, which collection of problems are just like the ones we're doing right now? Four. Yeah, number four, every single one of those. The ones I forgot to do. Oh, shit, there you go. <laughs> I don't know, I just skipped right by them. That's all right. <laughs> okay, so those should kind of jump out at you as, as uh, that's what you do there. Is that, is that cool? Mm -hmm. So five is that still part of section 25? Oh, yeah, thank you. So five is going to be on the next test. Five is from section 12.6. So 12.6 is where we start solving equations that have radicals in them. All right, so now that I'm moving it to the next test, I can actually make those problems a little bit harder. Oh, no. Trade-off. Oh, yes? So on the practice test on 4C, how would you do that one? All right. So everybody take a second. Don't say anything. Try to do 4C from the practice test. This one here. Don't say anything. So it's 5, and what's this? 
square to 9, set square to 2. Yeah, because there can't be two fives. There's only one. Five times this times that is the answer. Good. So five times that is? Yep. This is all multiplied. All right, guys, so how do you break up the 27? Right. All right. And again, I could break 12 up as 2 and 6, right? But why is that not good here? Neither 2 nor 6 is a square. I can't square root either one of those. You always want to break it up into something I can do the roots times whatever the hell else. So here I get five times three. Square root of four is two. There's a really good example of a step you can skip safely. You with me? But I really want to show everybody where things are coming from. So five times this is five times three, which is 15. Three times two, six. Nine. Fifteen of these minus six of these is nine of these. Right, don't you say nine and say, well, the square root of three is canceled. No, they can't cancel. You're collecting how many of them are left. Fifteen of them minus six of them is nine of them. Yeah. I typically think of those as letters. Yeah, my guess. Exactly, right? So this is like 15x minus 6x. Yeah. And why does that make sense? Because x is something I don't know, and so is square root of three. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Maybe. Yes. I find it easier just to break them all down to um, like 27. Like oh, yeah, sure, sure. Three and so, nine, and then three and three, and then like eight. I like it. So you could do, you could break them down all the way. Like, I make, I like, I make like just a little tree from the 27 and three, and then it's like, oh, well, I only need two threes because it's a square root. Yeah, so any two threes, one will come out. Yeah, yeah. sure. That works beautifully. So any way that you can get that to come down to this is good. As long as you know, if I can see some of what you're doing, yeah. So, because you said we're not doing part five from the practice test. Yeah, number five, yeah. So, you said there was going to be harder ones on the <laughs> test. The only reason I said that is because the next thing, the next uh, uh, chapter we're going to look at is going to introduce, you know, we're going to introduce complex numbers. So now we can have uh, some more difficult. Ideas. Yeah, and we're going to talk about like quadratic formula and stuff like that. Oh, so, so, so yeah, the equations that would end up from them, I can now make them something that will factor, because then you just use quadratic formula. Right. Yay! Ah. Unintended consequence. <laughs> <laughs> Any? All right. Um. Okay. So let me throw some variables in there just to make this nice and disgusting.
Yeah, so now you have five extra weeks. Oh, I can just add it. So which one of these can I do something with? One left. First, three goes into four. So I take one x with one x left over. I just love that shortcut. I showed you a few other ways to do it. The more you get used to that shortcut, it's beautiful. And then this guy ain't anything to do to it, but it's okay because I got five of these minus three of these. There's two of these. There's two of these. You with me? So that cumulative of x is just like another variable. Well, it is a variable, but it's like xy. So if I had 5xy minus 3xy, it'd be 2xy. Okay, cool. cool. What about this guy? Which one can I do something with? Left one. First one again. 48. Yeah, how can I break 48 up? 2 and 8 and 6 and 3. Or 4 2s and 3, right? And then if you want to, again, you could break this up as y4 times y if you want to. It's, again, it's a little indication of why the shortcut works. 4 through to this would be 1y, and that y would stay inside. Whereas if I go 4 goes into 5 once, 1y one is out here, 1 left inside. Right? They both agree like that. So what do I end up with? Let me rewrite this all out. 4 through to 16 times a 4 through to 3 xy times the fourth root of y4 minus this dude. What's the fourth root of 16? 2. 2. What's the fourth root of y4? Y. y. And the fourth root of business here? I don't know. So again, do I have like terms? Yeah. Yep. So I have two of these minus three of these is negative, negative one of these. Don't lose that fourth root anywhere in the whole thing. Don't suddenly make it become a square root. Yeah. Okay. Um, the last thing where like you broke it down with like the x's and the y's. Oh here? Yeah. Are you okay here? Uh, no. So 48. Why did I break it up oh. as 16 and 3? Because I can do the fourth root of 16. Yeah. Okay. So I so I can break this fourth root of this mess up in the fourth root of 16, okay. the fourth root of this dude, and the fourth root of that dude. Right. So here's 3xy. I put all those together because none of those can be done. Okay. 4 through to 16 I can do. The 4 through to y4 I can do. Yeah. So break it up into parts you can do and a part you cannot do. Okay. So that's pretty much as ugly as the ones you'll see. Is is this mess there? Right. Um, Okay. Ooh, I like that one. Let's do this this one here before we get to the next couple ideas in this section. Um, 
what are we playing on right now? What is this? 12 what? This is 12 5. Okay. So, uh, a general now, now a square root. What is where does that fall in order of operations? For example, exponents. Good, because roots are exponents; they're fractional exponents, right? So, if I have something like this, a plus b squared, is that a squared plus b squared? No. no. Thank God. Hell no. Right. So I cannot take a square root and apply it to both of those. Because a square root is an exponent, and they do not play well with subtraction and addition. Because exponents are based on multiplication. That's why the first step is make sure the inside is factored. Greatest common factor, maybe. Could you go to four and make it exponent Yeah, exactly. So inside I can factor it as four times x minus one. And x squared. Now it feels like I'm on the right track because it looks like it's going to have maybe some like term kind of thing in there. So I don't ever, and again, this is, might just be a way to say it, but I want to be really careful. I can't ever just take something out of a root. I can apply the root to it. What is square root of 4? 2. So I can just write a 2. It didn't come out of the radical. It just doesn't have a radical on it anymore because I already did the radical to it. Radical 4 is 2. But what's radical x minus 1? I don't know. Radical x minus 1. Because I don't know what it is, right? If it was x minus 1 squared, I could do something with it, right? The radical could kill the square, but it's just that I can't do anything with it. Here, square root of x squared. X. Yeah, assuming that there, I don't know if they say this, assuming no radicands are created from negative numbers and all of that, right? Because what would you really, really need there in general? Absolute value, right? There's going to be a big part of the test where I say, you should see in the book too, so if it assume does, that nothing under the radical was created by negative, or, or they're not so negative. So if it doesn't say that, then you need, then you need absolute. absolute. Uh, exactly. And what's left inside? Okay. X minus 1. 2 minus So you can't stop. You can argue that they're not like terms, but I can at least do something that looks more like a GCF. So I can put 2 and negative x together in front of radical x minus 1. What did I really do? I just took a radical x minus 1 out. Right? That's, that's GCF. You guys kind of with me there? Yes. So they both have this. So we can take it out, and then I'm left with 2 minus x. Do you want the parentheses? Yeah, because the whole thing yeah. needs to be multiplied thing. by it. If I write this, then that's saying it's 2 okay. minus x times radical. That's not what I want. I want Square root of x minus 1 has to go back to both to get back to where I was. So this is no good. So that's the answer? This here's the answer. Yeah. That's definitely as far as I can go, yeah. So 
This is an example of a problem that uh, if this was a number, it would be no problem, right? If there's two minus three, then I can just put a negative one there. But if, it's, if these aren't like terms, you actually just collect them still. You still collect them, but you can't subtract them. So you just say whatever the hell two minus x is in front of that, right? Okay. So what if I had two radical x minus one minus five radical x minus one? What would that be? Oh, that'd be 2 minus 5 radical x minus 1, right? Bam. Negative 3 radical that's So I'm just saying, I don't know what x is, but this is what I would do if I knew what it was. Yeah, no, and then I would go negative 3 radical x minus 1. I'm just saying, you guys said negative 3, and I said, oh, this is what you did to get there. Right. So if this is an x... I still do the same thing, I just can't go another step. Okay. Of course, we always skip this step, don't we? Because we don't need to write the data. But that's really the step that we skip. So that's the step I can't skip. Enough of that problem. Okay. Um, all right. So what's the next level? There's a whole another level. Is that reference tool now? Um, so what if I had this here? cares about what the operations are, right? What property do we use here? Distribution. Distribution, yeah. So the distributive property doesn't care to the radicals. We do. Oh, shit, how do you do this again? But you just distribute it. So it would be, what, 2 rad 15? I love it. I always have somebody has a problem with exactly how this works. Why is the 2 not affected or something? Because there's But remind me, what? how do you do this? Two x squared. Why is the two not affect? No. So of course the x just goes with what it can go with, and it's still multiplied by two, so it's all good, right? So of course you take the radical and you multiply it by the radical piece, because that's what you can do. And the two is still a part of it, so it's two rad fifteen minus. I love it because this would be rad twenty five, which is five. Is that is that cool? Yeah. Because square root of five and square root of five they complete each other. It makes a whole five. And since you don't have like terms, you can't have the two in the five. Yeah, these are not like terms. I always get somebody that tells me the next step, which is neat because there's no next step. Right. These aren't like terms, so don't make that mistake. Second. Oh. Why are like terms? Wait, give me one second. So the step I kind of skipped here is what's root 5 times root 5 is root 25. Yep. And what's root 25? 5. 5. So why don't they go? Uh, what's what's two x minus five? Good. So what's twice something I don't know minus five? I can't do shit. If it was another radical fifteen here, like another x, maybe like terms. Are these like terms? No. Because here I got two of these minus five. I can't do those. Yeah. Is it tight? So you can imagine the next, you know, like the, the words when you describe this. Um, you can imagine maybe, if you allowed your brain to think that way, what the next level would be. If I can distribute a single radical through, I can do FOIL type stuff. No. <laughs> that was scary, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So something doesn't have a, a, a square root, um, like for example, that 2 15, like you were saying. Um, because 5 doesn't have a square root of 15, you can't subtract that 5 with that 2. I love it. And I really want you guys to understand that that's exactly why I can't do anything with this, because 5 doesn't have an x. They're not like terms. 5 doesn't have what this guy has. They're not like terms. I can't go to the next step. Yeah. And I can't simplify radical 15. So would you, right. would you multiply the 3 with the 4? 
Yes, I love it. Multiply parts you can. So 3x times 4x is 12x squared. You multiply the 3 and the 4. Same thing you do here. You multiply the stuff you can. Or that you're allowed to. Let me say that way. Oh, yeah, so if this said square root of 16, yeah. it would be 2 times 4, 8. Because that is, this is multiplication here. Yeah. All right, I got to pull it out. <laughs> Simplify what you can. If you have any like terms, if you have any radicals you could do something with. So FOIL. Twelve fourteen. Twelve. Square root of fourteen. Minus fifteen. Square root of seventy-seven. And I'm not gonna skip any steps here. Plus four square root of four. Minus five square root of twenty-two. Twenty-two. Let me stop right there. You guys cool so far? Yeah. Now, of course, I hope several people didn't do this, but I just want to put it up there for those that did. This is fine, except I look through and I say, do I have any like terms? No. Do I have any radicals I can simplify? Yes. Right? So then I got 12 rad 14, rad 15, rad 77, plus 4 times 2, which is... That's the answer. That's the answer. Yes. But isn't this three? No. Good. I like it. I like your face. Perfect face. I hope. Because uh, that's eight minus five of these. I, I can't put those together. I mean, don't make those little mistakes. I hate it when you get the right answer and then you got two more steps. I'm like, damn. Stop. <laughs> yeah. So four times two. Two. Because what's rad for? Two. And what's rad four doing to four? Multiply. multiply. So whatever rad four is, we'll multiply by the four. That's the, the operation. So is this where we start factoring it? How do we go backwards? Not quite, but I like what you said because I'm going to go somewhere related to that here in a minute. You would, Jeff. But don't freak out. I'm not going to give you this and say factor it. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Can you do that? I mean, you do grouping. You do grouping. What's up? Uh, it's just going to say simplify? Yeah, it will just say simplify. Because simplify means carry out all the operations. So it's the exact opposite of factor. Because factor means undo multiplication. Um, okay, so what's the next level? It's enough levels, Jeff, man. <laughs> So how do you divide uh, radical expressions? This is still part of five, six, or twelve. Uh,
this is an idea that we're going to come back to when we get to complex numbers. The way to simplify this is to try to make the bottom not a radical anymore. Right? So it's sort of like rationalize the denominator. In fact, you'll see some problems in the homework. It says rationalize the denominator, and it looks like this. But this is actually the way that you divide these things. The only way you can do it is to make the bottom a number. So then all the radicals are on top, and you can kind of collect them together if you can. So how the hell? I mean, if that wasn't there, I would just multiply by rad 5. But that is there. If I multiply by rad 5, am I going to get rid of my radicals? No. You should break it up into two separate. You multiply by what's called the conjugate, which all that means is what's his difference of squares partner look like? Rad 5 minus 2. So if you multiply those, if you FOIL those out, I really want you to understand this, the only place radicals could show up would be in the middle term, but the middle terms are going to cancel. So you multiply by the conjugate, which really just means change the damn sign in the middle. So multiply by rad 5 minus 2. So when we get the complex numbers, we'll have the complex conjugate, which is the same damn thing, which is nice. So what do you multiply the top by? Good, not rad three plus one. You can't. You got to do the same thing to the top and bottom. So the biggest mistake I see here is somebody multiplies by exactly the same thing, but that's exactly not the concept. I want the middle terms to cancel. Wait, why did you do the Because that's how. You do it. So <laughs> I think the book will do uh, rationalize the denominator, and they might even have some of these to say rationalize the numerator. But to be completely honest, this is the definition of how you divide these things. This is how you divide radical expressions. I always say, I, I, do you want to long divide this? No. Thank God. You don't want to. So this is the way we do it. Very different, because this is very different than anything we've really worked with before. So on the top, what do I get? Root 15. Minus 3. Minus 2. Minus 2 rad 3. Minus rad, five. Minus rad 5 plus 2. All right, so you got to foil that bad boy out. What's up? Will it be 1? Yes, it will be 1. Thank you. I made this better than I wanted to. Yeah. Well, well, we haven't done it yet. Right, it doesn't cancel out. And this specific problem becomes a nice number that makes it look like this. Everybody okay with the top? Yeah. What do you get on the bottom? Five. five. Good. Rad 5 times rad 5 is rad 25, which is 5. Is that cool? Yeah. So what's rad 11.7 times rad 11.7? 11.7. So you don't make a big deal of it. Uh, plus 2 of these, minus 2 of these. I created it to kill the middle, and that's the only place where radicals were left. Right? So radicals gone. Minus 4. Yes, ma'am. So the radicals that cancel out, would it be two um, radical five? Yeah, two radical five minus two radical five, gone. Is that cool? Different we constructed squares. it to do that because we made it look like a difference of squares. All right. What's the difference of squares? X plus Y, X minus Y. Isn't that a difference of squares kind of idea? So I had this plus that. I made the other one the same thing minus that thing. So that's going to come out to be the middle term is going to cancel. And then, so on the bottom, it just happens to be one. one. So then I end up with blah, 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 blah. I don't make it over. Yeah. So why is the, um, when you do two into the rad five, why is it that canceled? Because, all right, uh, so here, what you really get on the bottom is five, five right. minus two rad five right. plus two rad five. Oh, okay. Yeah, so those go away. All right. Oh, you better teach me I wasn't so lazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> that whole one. All right. So here, you guys find this one. Wait, so the answer? Yeah, so the Wait, answer is just Yeah, so the answer, since this is one on the bottom, you guys are really going to make me do this, aren't you? <laughs> 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 or you check my boy. All right. Because the bottom is one. It's divided by one. Is it always going to be on one on the bottom? No. 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 It just have to be five and four. So here, you guys try this one. 
Which one, Jeff? <laughs> Hold on. Anybody come in later and not get their test back, their quiz back? Okay. Was this the quiz that we took yesterday? Yeah, this, yeah, this is from yesterday. Right. Huh? No, I made the key last night. I copied them this morning. <laughs> 